operator, art crisis go and demand, and architect with Eno, the architect for the project. We shall now have floral greetings to the dignitaries of the days, because flowers always say better than words. I request Mr. Cesar to present first the bouquet to his eminence, Cardinal Ferrara.
architects, engineers, contractors and workers whose dedication and skill have breathed new life into this site. Your hard work and commitment to authenticity have ensured that we preserve the beauty and integrity of this space for generations to come. I invite you all to join us in this joyous moment as we embark on a new chapter for the space known as John of God. May it thrive as a place of community service, spirituality, and inspiration nurturing future generations will carry forth the legacy of learning and restoring. Thank you for being here with us today. Let us embrace this new beginning with joy and gratitude as we have blessed and restored St. John of God. God bless you all. Thank you, Father Nona. It is now my pleasure to invite His Excellency Bishop Simeon Fernandez to kindly honor us with his address. Your Excellency. His Eminence, Most Reverend Philip Mary Cardinal Ferrand, our Archbishop, Reverend Father Noel Foster, our Financial Administrator, our Architect, Stevon Dino, whom we lovingly call Babush, and my dear friends. It gives me immense joy to be here today on this auspicious occasion when we had the blessing of this renovated structure. First and foremost, I raise my heart and mind to God in thanksgiving. As the psalm rightly says, if God does not build a house, in vain do the builders labor. Deus or God Panina, Vau Radenso, Vau Nilfur. It is often said, coming together is the beginning. Being together is progress and working together is success. I know this project of renovation has made many minds to come together, many hands to work together and that has led to the success of this beautiful structure that we have here. It seems once Pope John the 23rd was asked this question. How many people are working at Vatican? The person wanted to know the number of employees that Vatican had. And Pope John the 23rd said, only half of them. Only half of them. I know here so many people have worked and not just worked but worked over time and I would even say more than over time. And their hard labor, their toil has contributed to give us these beautiful spaces that would be useful for us in the days and the years to come. We are approaching the Jubilee and the Pope has given us a beautiful theme. He says in the letter that he has given to us, Pope has not disappointed us. I have an unwavering hope that the spaces that are here in this building will definitely continue to help us spiritually and also in other ways. As I conclude, I would like to appreciate the hard toil of all people who have contributed immensely towards this renovation project, spearheaded by our own Reverend Father Noel de Costa. I wish to congratulate all of them and I express once again my hope that this Spaces will definitely help us to have these spiritual reflections. Maybe 
many other programs that will take place here. God bless us all. Thank you, Your Excellency, for those kind words of appreciation, which I'm sure will board our team, the project team, to even greater achievements in the future. When you undertake a project of this magnitude, it is imperative that you put together a dedicated team to work towards its success. We now acknowledge and appreciate a number of people who have worked with their heart and worked with full dedication, tirelessly for this project. We shall present them with mementos at the hands of His Eminence, Cardinal Ferra and His Excellency, Bishop Simeon. I kindly request His Eminence, Cardinal Ferra, to give away the first few mementos. Engineer Godfrey S. Bell. And we applaud the engineer. Engineer Guru Prasad Kadurkar. I think he's stuck in traffic. Architect Estevan Budino. Architect Noah Anand Fernandez. <laughs> Mr. Vitus Calera. Mr. David D'Souza. Thank you, Your Excellency. I now kindly request Bishop Sunyama to hand over the next few mementos. Clyde Henricus. Architect Enrica Vanya Fernandez.
and Mr. Rosendo Mendoza. He is not present. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for the entire team. and help us honor three gentlemen who have shepherded this restoration project with a great deal of zeal and commitment. We shall present bouquets to them. First and foremost, Father Noel Costa, Procurator, Procurator Archdiocese Goa and the Man. Father Mario Souza, his assistant procurator. <laughs> Father Hokulan Korea. Yeah.
who had arrived in India in 1685, almost more than three centuries. And naturally, this construction must have started soon after they arrived in the 17th century. At first, the brothers looked after the sick spread through several hospitals in and around Old Goa. Old Goa was the capital. There were many hospitals. This convent was built as their own hospice for the poor of the city of Old Goa. And the brothers lived on arms. They begged and looked after the sick and the poor. The church is dedicated to Our Lady of Good Success. And this two-story convent building is characterized by multiple hip roofs, you must have noticed, also known as pagoda roofs, characteristic of Goan monastic and palace architecture of the 17th century, of which we have few examples still remain. The convent still maintains most of its built structure and I'm happy that our excellent gifted architects, engineers, with the support of all their collaborators have kept this structure. This convent was abandoned in 1835 when the religious orders were expelled from the Portuguese colonies. It was repaired by the Portuguese military force stationed there till December 1961 when Goa was liberated by the Indian Army. Later in 1964, it was taken over by the sisters of the congregation of the Franciscan Hospitalis, who as Father Noel reminded us in his introductory words, ran a home for the aged in this place. The sisters moved out from these premises a few years ago to occupy new installations a few meters away from here. The sisters have a home for the aged. Who was St. John of God? He was a simple man from Granada in Spain who lived in the 16th century. His name was John Siuda, a young man searching for meaning of life, meaning in life. He wandered as a shepherd, a laborer, and even as a soldier. Finally, inspired by a sermon preached by the well-known spiritual master, St. John of Avila, John decided to dedicate the rest of his life for the service of the suffering, the sick, and the needy. He had a profound experience of the love and compassion of God, and he was convinced that he had to be an instrument of that experience to others, an instrument of love, an instrument of compassion. The people of Granada in Spain started calling him John of God. Today is considered to be the patron of those who suffer and wander without knowing the meaning and goal of life. This is the beautiful, rich history of this house, which became an instrument of service to the sick, to the suffering, to the poor, to the needy. And for so many years, the Franciscan Hospital Assistants continued this mission of service to the elderly, to the sick, to the suffering. And now this house will continue to render service which is truly relevant to our times. It will be used for service. Within two days we will inaugurate the art exhibition entitled Footprints of Hope. This exhibition, art exhibition is being organized by the Exposition Committee, because art can be a powerful instrument of proclamation of the good news that Jesus brought into this world. And I think it was a right initiative taken by the Exposition Committee, because St. Francis Xavier, whose solemn exposition we are having within a few days, came to the East to share the good news of Jesus, keeping in mind 
the mandate that had been given by Jesus, go and proclaim the good news of love, of peace, of joy, of service. And that's what St. Francis Xavier did. An apostle of the good news that came from the east here. And there was another son of Goa, also connected with this place, old Goa, St. Joseph Vaz, who lived in the house which we now have as the spiritual renewal center. He lived there before he went as a messenger, as a proclaimer of the good news to the land of Sri Lanka. And when he was canonized, we had a Thanksgiving Mass in Kandy. And on that occasion, the Bishop of Kandy said, was it not for this son of Goa and in India, there would not be a single follower of Jesus on the island of Sri Lanka. Francis Xavier came as a proclaimer of the good news. Joseph Vaz went as an evangelizer, proclaimer of the good news. And in the lives of both of them, we see the spirit of service. Francis Xavier, coming from a noble family, who had such an important position in the society of Jesus, chose to live in the hospital, serving the poor, the sick, the suffering. Joseph Mars went to Sri Lanka and spent himself in the service, especially when this pestilence of smallpox struck and when the doctors, nurses, the kings, all the authorities ran away from Kandy. Joseph Vaz, with a group of followers of Jesus, rendered service to the, those who were dying in the forest, forgotten by the society, forsaken by their family members. It is the same mission of service that will be continued for this, from this house, service in ways that are relevant for us today to proclaim the good news. One beautiful initiative, as I said, is the art, the art exhibition that will be inaugurated day after tomorrow and which will be open to the public during all the days of the solemn exposition. But there will be here workshop for restoration, other activities and programs, maybe extension of the Museum of Sacred Art, all modern means for us to continue the mission given by Jesus to us, his disciples, to proclaim the good news. I wish to congratulate without mentioning too many names because we have heard them, we have given them small tokens of appreciation. The tokens are not proportionate to the depth of gratitude that we feel for all those who are involved in this challenging, difficult project of restoration. I thank all of them, beginning with Father Noel, the priest collaborators, Father Kulam and others, Babush, all the architects, engineers, workers, painters, electricians, all those who have worked. I thank you for all that you have done with so much love and dedication. And I pray that this St. John of God may continue its beautiful mission of service to the church, service to the society, service to humanity. Thank you, God. Thank you, Your Eminence, for a very interesting and informative speech. I thank you for sharing all that interesting information about the rich history of this place and its surroundings. As we approach the end of this function, I now request Architect Udiyu to propose a vote of thanks. Good evening everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, first, I would like to thank His Eminence Philip Narik Cardinal Ferran for and uh, His Excellency our Bishop Simeon Fernandez for taking time from this very pressing schedule during the exposition of time. For being with us to bless this small uh, rather small work 
of the entire work which is going on of the exposition. I am not an, a, a good orator because I heard all the priests who I am not used to speaking on the desk and neither I deserve this uh, role today because I think if I am not mistaken except for Father Erkulano who is here I am the second oldest I don't know if Luis is older than me and Muniz and Mr. Muniz in the audience uh, I first and foremost my gratitude to uh, Father Noam the Pastor who steered us into this project. I, I understood that first you have to believe in yourself before God believes in you. If you don't believe in yourself, then you can do nothing. And all I can say is that there was a God's hand in the blessing and the work we had done. I was, uh, my role of uh, describing the project was nicely taken over by Father Noel de Costa and the history of the building also by His Eminence Philip Mary so that I have very little to say about the vote of thanks, which is a thankless job. I think, I think all the people, all my team, first, I want you to give them a big hand. <laughs> Led by the able leadership of Godfrey Radio. He had sleepless nights. In fact, during this uh, journey of the last month, which is the last lap of the project, I was a little bit unwell. And I think uh, only all I could do is to talk to Godfrey on the phone. In spite of that, he did an immensely good job. I acknowledge the presence of my mentor, Mr. Muniz, Mr. Francisco Martin, and not forgetting Luis Jabal Fernandez who gave me moral support throughout this journey. I would like to thank the media persons, the engineers of PWD who in spite of the many outages in power, they were ready to fix it very late in the night. And I think uh, what I would like to say is David D'Souza, who, who, who is entrusted with the work of painting, he was here till 4 in the morning. And then when I came back at uh, 5 o'clock, I asked about him. In no time, he also came back, but his workers were on the job. Mr. Louis, the electrician, whose beautiful uh, lighting you can see both in the interior and the exterior, is marvelously handled by him. I cannot forget the work of the plumbing, which was the most difficult work also. Vitus Caldera did a wonderful job into recreating the difficult locations of toilets we, we as architects chose. I actually forgot to mention first my associate and primary architect because I thought Architecture, everybody thinks it's just a piece of paper. Many of my friends even think like that. That you can just draw a piece of paper and what do you charge money for? This piece of paper, you can throw it out in no time. I think what I could understand, I had to work with an uh, architect who is who could be my son, you know, half of my age. And it was the most difficult part because sometimes when you, you have a age difference, I think Godfrey also will agree with me. We had many occasions where we had to disagree in what to agree. 
I think Father Noel also bore the brunt of my uh, impatience. And Father Ekulam not to, because he is the eldest. I think I apologized him profusely before, but now in front of 